Hi everyone and welcome back to Tech Tip Tuesdays. Today I want to talk about two different things. We're going to use a bass clarinet today to demonstrate those. The first one is using the right tools and making sure you've got long handled screwdrivers. I'm going to show you why because it'll beat your knuckles up if you don't. So I'll show you why that is on this bass clarinet. The other thing I want to talk about is sealing the joints and how important it is to make sure that every one of the joints on the instrument actually seals up and is airtight. That way it's pushing air down the instrument instead of leaking it out, which is going to cause your players a lot of problems. Let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is these longer screwdrivers. Most of us will end up with these guys right here, these little tiny uh, red and black handle screwdrivers that are, frankly, they're inexpensive. And that's one of the reasons why we use them um, is because they're cheap, but they end up busting your knuckles up. Now these guys are going to come in different lengths because the, the tip of it is actually larger. So this tip here is being so much bigger than this one is and consequently the blade is longer. But uh, you'll notice on some of my better screwdrivers how much longer this is. And I don't mind this length, it's this length that I like with that really tiny small tip. And even longer still than that guy are these really long ones like this. So let's get you a better shot of that. What's even better still is these longer screwdrivers. So this is that large blade screwdriver here, but the tip is too big to get into these screws, but I want this really long one here uh, to use. And here's why. When we're trying to put on some of these keys, so like this guy here is going to uh, sit in, I'm somewhere around here, sit in around here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay this screw in. If I can, I start with my fingers. So then I'm gonna use this long screwdriver and start putting this in. Now when I'm clear back here, you notice how my hand, this hand here is clear off of the instrument. I'm, I'm over top of it, but my, my fingers are up off the instrument and the angle is up high enough that I can actually get this taken care of. Let me show you a different angle of this. So my hand is up over here as I am guiding this screw in. If I were to use this little tiny screwdriver here and stick this in, it fits, but now my fingers are right over top of the instrument itself and I'm busting my knuckles in. And unless you're good enough to lay this in your hand nice and tight and screw this in, these become a lot more difficult to use. What ends up happening is it slows your repair down a lot, which means you're eating up more classroom time or more time that you're not getting paid for um, simply because of the tool you're using. If I even use longer screwdrivers, as I get this tip in there, now I'm clear off the instrument completely. All I have here is this leak light that's inside of this thing. And I can adjust this screw from clear back here without hitting a thing. Some people think that it's way too long or too far. Some teachers think that it's way too far of a stretch to be able to use these long ones, but it's not. It's actually exactly the tool I recommend that you use. Now, out here on the end, it's not too bad because as I'm coming in straight at it, the bass clarinet ends. Now, when I go to the other end of the bass clarinet and I'm gonna come in this direction, the entire body is in underneath there. And I wanna be able to change the angle. I can't find me at all. I want to be able to change the angle of my attack. That way I'm up over top of the instrument instead of having to be nice and tight and scrunched down here and being right in in order to hit that angle and bust up my fingers. Let's show you that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go after this post here and my screwdriver is going to be extended out. Let's make this bigger. And my screwdriver is going to be extended out. So as I take this next screw, Now what we've got is I've got this large angle here where my fingers can actually come up off the instrument and I can work the screwdriver um, as needed. And then my fingers are free to move and spin. Instead of having this little tiny guy that fits, and you can say you use this big one, but the big one doesn't fit the screw at all, it doesn't fit inside the post. Instead, I'd be left with this little guy and I'm clear up in here and it is a lot more difficult to use that screw um, the way I need to in order to get this thing to balance out right. So the other thing I want to do on this screw is I want to set its balance. You notice if I turn this thing too far, my key does not want to move at all. But if I loosen that up just a little bit, now that's going to move. 
I'm going to check to make sure that both ends are tight. That's the movement that I want out of that. So the first tip for today is a good set of screwdrivers, not these cheap little guys. I promise you, it's you're going to spend about twenty dollars per, per screwdriver or thereabouts, or um, depending on what you can find. And it's worth every last red cent. Because remember, the, the majority of the time you're going to be using these instruments, or these tools, I mean, is five minutes before the concert starts. Every second is going to count for you at that point. Having the right equipment uh, to make sure you're safe and that the instrument is safe and that you can get the job done quickly, it'll be well worth the expense. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is joints and sealing the joints up. So on this bass clarinet here, the primary joint that I see leaking all the time is the center tenon. This particular bass clarinet goes in and out of the case just like it is. It doesn't come apart. And it has this ring, this metal ring around it that will allow the joint to move freely. So right now it's nice and tight. Or if you use an Allen wrench on this particular one, some of them will be screws, and we loosen this guy up, this joint is free to twist around and move. Now when we have this instrument together and everything lined up correctly here, what I want to make sure that I have is that this joint here is turned down and, and tight. I don't want there to be any wiggle or any question in this at all. So I'm going to put a pretty good bite on this guy, making sure I'm just a really firm handshake, not as strong as I can possibly go, and make sure that this, this joint is really firm and tight and not twisting around on me. That's the first joint that I find um, loose and leaking air all the time and people will complain that everything in the lower stack or the right hands anything I'm playing with the right hand is a little weak and a little airy. It's because it's leaking at that center joint and nothing's getting the air compression that it needs. Tighten that up, a lot of your problems will be solved. The other problem that we see on a lot of bass clarinets is up here at the at the neck where, where we put the neck in. So if this joint is clean and I tighten the next screw down. And remember, if you're not teaching your students to tighten this next screw, you're, you're creating problems for them uh, because this joint is leaking. This needs to be tight to the point that the neck doesn't move and wiggle back and forth. When you wiggle back and forth like this, it should not move at all. If it does, if, it, if you get a little bit of movement out of this when the body itself isn't moving, it is way too loose and you've got air leaking out of here. Now there's two ways you can do it. If it's an emergency um, repair, you're noticing the night of the concert that, that this thing has finally been dropped or dented or smushed around to the point where it's leaking, then great. Wrap this joint with some Teflon tape and move on with life and get it into your repair shop tomorrow. But notice this far beyond the, on the concert, please, for your players that that, that that joint gets tight. And if the way we do it is you send it into a nerd like me that's got an expander. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to expand this metal tenon and make sure that this uh, female tenon, this receiver here, is perfectly round, that this is perfectly round. If they are and it's still not fitting, we're going to expand this and make this just a little bit bigger and get this to be a really nice, nice tight fit. But that does require specialty tooling that I don't recommend you guys have. Um, but send it to your local shop and they should have that stuff and be able to get that nice and tight. Same thing goes true with saxophones as well. The third joint on a bass clarinet that always leaks is down here at the bell. Now, on those that the low E flat is on the body, I'll be honest, it's not nearly as critical as those where the key is on the bell. And the way we do that, because this joint is always corked, is we use paraffin wax. Paraffin wax is cheap, guys. Go to any grocery store out there, go into the canning or the baking aisle, and you're going to find paraffin wax. An entire box is going to last your entire district probably the rest of their lifetime. Chop it up into little tiny blocks. I have been using this one. You can see it's just all dirty and crunched up because it's been sitting in my shop now for, I don't know, a couple years uh, in order to get this notch into it. So I wax that up to where it's fairly heavy with wax. And then I take my bell and I will force the bell back on there. It's gonna be a little sticky when you've got this much wax on it, and that's okay. We're really forcing that um, wax down inside there. Then I'm gonna take just a cloth and wipe off any excess wax that I have. And then I'm just gonna come in and grease it again. A very small amount will do us. If you can get those three joints sealed up nice and tight, um, 
then you're going to have a lot better success getting your horn to play well from top to bottom and all of those adjustments coming out and all the intonation issues solved because you're not leaking any air. So use the right tools, get yourself a good set of long screwdrivers. Second thing, make sure all three of those joints really are sealed up by making sure that that neck receiver actually fits correctly. Make sure that the center tenon here is actually bound down and tight and that the lower joint um, is paraffin waxed up because of that cork. Uh, wax that thing up and then put that bell on really nice and tight with just a small amount of, of grease to make sure that it fits in really well. You guys, live tech ticks are always here. So if you want, come and join me live and bring your questions. If you've got a question that you want to talk about, jump on just a minute or two early and let me know. Say, hey, Steve, I really want to talk about this or drop me an email. My email is on the website. All you have to do is come over here. Uh, let's see. Come on over to my contact page and my email address and all that information is there. Um, you can also check out the live streams. What we can do is we can do uh, professional development courses for you or your entire district or your anatomy group and train everybody on a variety of topics. And underneath the live sessions down here, I offer a suggestion of topics and then you can come right down here and schedule your live session uh, right with me for free. Guys, come on over and check out repairmasterclass.com for all the course offerings that we offer that we have, for all of the trainings that we can do for you in your in your school district. I'm happy to help out in any way that I can. Join me for every Tuesday uh, right here live for our session. If you've got a question, bring it to me. We'll get it taken care of for free. Talk to you guys next week. Cheers.